Hey guys, we're back on the RCA 87T. Um, I've been working on the cabinet here. I've stripped the veneer off from the top and filled in any of the imperfections uh, where the glue stuck pretty good and peeled some of the underlayment up. I've filled it in with this um, DAP plastic wood. It works pretty good. It dries pretty fast. I've done one coat and sanded it and I have to sand this coat yet and uh, my veneer came in this is a package of my veneer that I got so we're going to work on that and probably get the veneer on the top done and then maybe tomorrow after work I'll work on building this little piece here for the uh, grill so I'm gonna get sanding on this and uh, get some veneer cut Alrighty, there's the veneer replaced on the top. Um, I used Weldwood contact cement. You brush it on um, both sides. And there is a seam that runs down through here as the original. Um, and I just put masking tape on here across the grain every two inches or so and pulled it together with my fingers and put tape on. And then I ran one. Um, along the seam and then of course that was on the outside and then once it's glued down and I rolled it um, securely with just a, a wallpaper seam roller around the edges start from the center work your way out that way if there's any air bubbles they'll they'll find themselves to the edge um, on bigger pieces you can actually put dowel pieces of dowel or cardboard or something because it won't stick to the glue once it's dry and then you can pull them out one at a time and, and you know touch the side down so it'll stick and then work it you know pull a cardboard out or a dowel out and work along till you get the whole thing down but this piece was small enough that it actually laid on there quite well um, I just set it in the center and touched it and then worked my roller out um, cut it bigger about an inch all the way around or more and then once it's rolled down and it's secured around the edges um, be careful that you don't roll off the edge like this especially on the end grain because then it'll split split this off and it won't make a nice clean cut so you want to make sure that when you get close to the edge you run the roller this way and along the, the, the along the grain it's not such a big deal because it'll it'll bend that way but to make sure it's rolled down good all the way around then I turn it face down on this piece of cardboard here and took a um, really sharp knife and uh, don't try to cut it all in one pass you just kind of score across it and across it and across it right close to this edge you know we'll use this as an example um, you just run the knife straight as you can along the edge. If it's a little big that's okay because you're going to sand it sand it down anyway and I had put masking tape around this edge here to protect from glue uh, dripping off the edge so that was a little bit thicker anyway where my knife ran <clears throat> and you try to keep it straight so that when you're cutting it's a straight cut you don't want to try to get in here at an angle because then obviously it'll be skinnier on the, the top side where you're going to see it so I think it came out pretty good. Um, there's the one spot over here that needs needs some attention. It'll probably be quite visible, but I'm going to try to patch a piece in there. Um, yeah, I'll just try to do my best. It's on the back, and that's the only real chip in the veneer, other than what was on the top where it was chipped, and of course the piece that's missing on the speaker grill. But we'll tackle that tomorrow. Um, I'm not going to do anything more. I'm not going to clean up. There's some tape residue along the seam. I'm not going to do anything with that until the glue has set up overnight and all the, the vapors have um, evaporated out. So that I'm sure that that's stuck good because I don't want to start, you know, use some uh, thinner or whatever on this tape and have that soften up the, the glue. I want to make sure it's set up as good as it can be and I probably won't tackle this little piece either um, I'll do that when I do the front but it doesn't look bad 
it's nice and smooth. I don't feel any imperfections or divots or anything underneath the underneath the veneer. So if I can match the color, which will be a little tricky, but we'll give it my best shot. And I got some lacquer. I'll I'll uh, clean up this edge here because there's some gunk in there. Give the whole thing a light sanding. Once I get these pieces, this piece here replaced, I'll give the whole thing a real light sanding because I don't want to mess up the colors. And then uh, give it uh, give it a, coat, a couple coats of lacquer, and we'll see how it comes out. So anyway, um, I'll continue this video tomorrow. All right, guys, it's the next day. Um, I've got the top cleaned off. It's still a little damp here from the uh, mineral spirits, but I got the uh, tape residue off. The joint doesn't look too bad. Um, I've got the one corner here patched in. Um, i got to finish sanding this once that sets up a little bit better. And I've started work on the front here. I've trimmed the veneer straight across this joint and left a little bit of the original wood there. And then this side I actually had to trim back because it was chipped on the corner. And I left the original wood sticking out a little bit. And then that's what I've done on the inside on both of them here and here. As I've hollowed out about half the thickness of the um, wood front so that I can um, make this piece here fit inside and overlap. And I can glue this really good because it needs to be flush with the rest of the wood because the grill cloth goes in here and if it's humped up obviously it won't fit right so that's where that part is and then I fabricated a uh, replacement part for here like so um, I've made this out of oak and actually um, bent this um, I was going to cut it out with my bandsaw, but then that would be end grain all along here, and that would be very weak. So I thought I would try to do it the way they did. Um, I believe this is plywood, but um, I took a piece of oak and cut it on my table saw to the to the right thickness. It's <clears throat> it's a little bit thinner than this, so that the veneer it should be pretty close, and uh, it'll all depend on how much I cut away where this fits into the recess here as to where the face of it ends up being but I'll trim that just so that the the face of that piece lines right up with this so that the veneer will be all flat <clears throat> so I cut it to the right thickness and the right width it's the same width as this one and then I hollowed this out with my razor blade knife here I made a whole bunch of little shavings all over and then I basically um, put it in a pot of boiling water, um, just the bottom half here, and let it boil in there for probably 10 or 15 minutes until this was soft. And I took it out and bent it, and of course it bent right around, and I put tape on it <clears throat> a little bit farther than 90 degrees, because when you release the tape, after this is dry, it's going to want to spring back a little bit. So hopefully it's hopefully it's close that it'll end up about 90, but um, it will be still somewhat flexible even after it's dry, and I can clamp it in here and in here to get the right angle so it'll line up with this. And once I get that in there and it's um, glued in and dried, then I'll cut a piece of veneer and try to match up. But it'll be a little difficult because there is a seam here where it's a different color. And we've got dark, and then you got light, and then you got dark, and then you got light, and then you got dark. Well, there's a seam right there that runs right down the center of this speaker grill slat. So that might be a little tricky to mimic. Um, I will probably just split me a piece of veneer, use two halves, um, just like I did this joint up here, just so that there's a distinct line. Um, 
and then color matching the stain will be the tricky part but I will do my best to try to blend that in and repair that it will be obvious you know that there's a, a break there but um, I think it'll be a lot better than just um, cutting this off I mean you could just cut that off and then tone the edge of this on both sides and most people probably wouldn't know but I would and I'd like to you know try to get that replaced with this piece here so um, I gotta let this dry for a while and probably won't get back to this till tomorrow which will be Friday so <clears throat> we'll go from there well it is Thursday night and I got no electric um, it's pretty windy out it's about 8:30 at night and I've been working by lamplight I've been doing some woodwork um, I don't know how well you're gonna be able to see this because it's pretty dark in here but there is the piece that is going in here just like that I'm gonna get my flashlight here just like that it fits pretty nice um, there's no veneer on it yet obviously but I am going to glue this in tonight so that it'll have a chance to dry <clears throat> and I just wanted you to to see this step um, to see the piece here before it, before it got put in so you can see how it how it looks and how it's made there's a little offset in the end of that it's made up with the the offset in the cabinet there and then same thing on this end I whittled a little offset little that mates into there and I'm going to fill her up with some glue and get that mounted in there and think about going to bed um, I let the electric company know that I've got no power so hopefully they'll come before it's time for bed and get my power on alrighty it's Friday afternoon um, I got the clamps off the new oak curved piece is in and I'm just sanding up here the joints and the curves and everything getting them to match in good um, it's come out pretty good it's not exactly the same profile but it's damn close pretty good from my house for just uh, whittling it out and bending it um, it's a lot better than it being missing that's what it looks like from the inside and this is this is a little bit less than flush but not sticking up so the speaker grill will go right in there and, and uh, that should work out just just fine so I gotta get it all sanded up here get everything all matched in and then I think I'm gonna color the edges um, a darker coloring first so this is kind of a dark here um, they just hit it with some dark stain I think or probably some tinting stain but I don't have any tinting stain <clears throat> but I want to hit these edges first and then let it you know let that dry wipe the stain off that way when I put the veneer on the edge of the veneer won't get the real dark color on it and it won't bleed over onto the face so I don't want it to bleed over here onto the face um, at all the darkness so that's where we're at it's uh, it's coming along nice I'm I'm pretty happy with it you know it's pretty rugged and uh, it's actually stronger than the original because this is is a hardwood that I bent here and this is plywood that is bent so of course the hardwood's going to be stronger but I'm happy with it hopefully the veneer lines will come out halfway decent you know I mean it's uh, this one here will be less obvious because it's it's going to line up with this the cut here uh, in the opening but you know you will see that this one is going to be a little bit more obvious because I had to cut in a little bit because of that chip on the corner there so 
that one is actually back in like an eighth of an inch. That one will be a little bit more obvious. It'll all depend on how close I can match the stain um, on the veneer. I picked up a bunch of other colors of stain this afternoon. So hopefully with those I can get a pretty darn close match. Alright, we've got that chip there matched really well. Um, you know, you can see the, the seam along there, but there's not much you can do about that. But that color is matched pretty darn close. I'm very happy with that. And I've got the edges done on this um, so that they're dark. And I was going to attach the um, veneer first, like I did the top, before staining it, but I wasn't. I was concerned that the dark stain here would bleed into the lighter stain for the bottom piece because there is a seam there, and I want to try to match that best I can. So I stained the pieces first, which is kind of backwards from what you usually do. And um, this is English chestnut, and this is Jacobean. And the Jacobean is a little bit darker, but if you scuff it with a sandpaper. It's almost exactly the same as, as this darker color, which is what I used for this band on the, that chip, was the Jacobean, and you just scuff it a little bit with sandpaper, and then when you uh, you take your thumb and lick your thumb and put a little moisture on there, they match perfect. And this one matches pretty close. It's a little bit not quite as red, but you know it's, it's hard to tell because this is a little bit damp yet, but if you... If you wet that, it's a little bit not quite as red, but it's not bad. I might try to put a little bit of cherry on there or something to give that a little bit of red. But um, we're gonna I have to soak this so that this will bend, and uh, I'll do that and try to get a curve to it or get it close to the right curve. Then I'll let it dry out really good, and then I will glue it and put it on with the contact cement because it won't glue well if it's bent or if it's wet and it won't bend well if it's dry so I have to make a compromise but it's coming along hopefully it will look pretty darn nice alright I've got the veneer glued on both pieces the joint doesn't look too bad I haven't sanded it or anything I'm gonna let the uh, let the glue dry um, probably over the weekend and maybe just maybe I'll work on it tomorrow but I don't know yet but I'm gonna upload this video um, I'll let the glue dry real good before I trim that from the back side <clears throat> and sand it and hopefully it'll be turning out pretty nice it doesn't look too awful bad it's not perfect but a lot better than the missing piece so anyway um thanks for watching and tune in next time